This is the Continuum Lab. I'm Jeppe, musician, maker and your host on this visit. In today's video I get into the many capacitive sensors on the open horn MIDI system, my main project in the lab. But first, a short disclaimer. The Continuum has no end and no beginning. It represents the sum total of all knowledge, stretching from the unnoticeably small and to the incomprehensibly vast. So the Continuum Lab is not really a physical space at all. I think of it as a state of mind, like a mental leap of faith from the comfortable platform of the known and into the infinite ignorance, where learning is the only method of propulsion. Welcome to the Continuum Lab. The rest of the body of the open horn is no less packed with sensors than the mouthpiece, which I showed you in the last video. The main keys here in the front, the octaves, the sliders and the side keys, as well as the upper and lower lip position sensors are all capacitive sensors. Now the Teensy microcontroller makes it really easy to read capacitive sensors and it provides some nice options for adjusting sensitivity and resolution. With a bit of customization of the library, I'm now able to adjust these settings while the software is running, allowing me to optimize uh, the trade-off between read time and resolution for each capacitive sensor at any given moment. For example, in the default horn playing mode, the keys are mapped to a binary output, so they can be read at a lower resolution to attain super fast read times. But those same keys in the percussive playing mode are read at higher resolution, allowing velocity control. Perhaps in the future I will implement pitch bend in the keys to take advantage of their capacitive nature, but honestly that comes with a whole selection of other conceptual problems which I won't get into here. Suffice to say that it would actually be a completely different instrument from the open horn, which is basically hard-coded to do pitch bend in the neck of the instrument. The special function keys, which are these two here, which are a different color than the rest, can be used to instantaneously access the biphonic playing modes. First, there's the sustain mode, which sustains the current note so that you can keep playing on top. parallel mode can then lock the interval created by the current note and the current sustained note so that as you keep playing that sustained note now turns into a parallel voice which maintains the interval. The split mode is a totally different experience. It allows complete and separate control over each of the two voices, one in each hand. The octave section of the open horn functions the same throughout all of this, applying its logic to whatever you play, single or double voice. The open horn has a 7 octave range, which you uh, access by placing your left thumb on top of one or two of these four capacitive touch sensors here at the top of the belly section of the ohms. <laughs> Two capacitive touch sliders on the side of the instrument consist of each four capacitive sensors placed in a pattern so that the touch of a finger covers one sensor and the next one over to a varying degree and then applying a classic uh, slider algorithm to that to resolve an absolute position. The output from the sliders can be a customizable continuous controller, it could be an NRPN or alternatively you can use it as an activator for one of the other sensors. And that's the last of the capacitive sensors. I realize that I'm running through all of this really really fast but there's just so much to cover and not enough time and I really want to try to keep these videos kind of short. To illustrate the problem I just realized that I completely forgot to mention the inertial measurement unit or the IMU sensor inside the open horn which allows me to measure the tilt and roll of the instrument and so that will have to go on a completely separate video but such is life. In the next video I will briefly cover the Teensy microcontroller which is the brain of the open horn and then I will get into the uh, software and synthesizer setup that I use to make sound and how it's all connected. See you there.